A creole language, or simply creole, is a stable natural language that develops from the mixing and simplifying of different languages at a fairly sudden point in time, often, a pidgin transitioned into a full-fledged language. While the concept is similar to that of a mixed or hybrid language, a creole is often additionally defined as being highly simplified when compared to its parent languages. However, a creole is still complex enough that it has a consistent system of grammar, possesses a large stable vocabulary, and is acquired by children as their native language, all of which distinguishes a creole language from a pidgin. The precise number of creole languages is not known, particularly as many are poorly attested or documented. About 100 creole languages have arisen since 1500. These are predominantly based on European languages such as English and French due to the age of discovery and the Atlantic slave trade that arose at that time. With the improvements in ship building and navigation, traders had to learn to communicate with people around the world, and the quickest way to do this was to develop a pidgin, or simplified language suited to the purpose. In turn, full Creole languages developed from these pidgins. In addition to Creoles that have European languages as their base, there are, for example, Creoles based on Arabic, Chinese, and Malay. The Creole with the largest number of speakers is Haitian Creole, with almost 10 million native speakers, followed by Tok Pisin with about 4 million, most of whom are second language speakers. The lexicon, or, roughly, the base or essential vocabulary, such as, run, but not, running of a Creole language is largely supplied by the parent languages, particularly that of the most dominant group in the social context of the Creole's construction. However, there are often clear phonetic and semantic shifts. On the other hand, the grammar that has evolved often has new or unique features that differ substantially from those of the parent languages. Overview A creole is believed to arise when a pidgin, developed by adults for use as a second language, becomes the native and primary language of their children, a process known as nativization. The pidgin creole life cycle was studied by Hall in the 1960s. Some argue that creoles share more grammatical similarities with each other than with the languages from which they are phylogenetically derived. However, there is no widely accepted theory that would account for those perceived similarities. Moreover, no grammatical feature has been shown to be specific to creoles. Many of the creoles known today arose in the last 500 years, as a result of the worldwide expansion of European maritime power and trade in the Age of Discovery, which led to extensive European colonial empires. Like most non official and minority languages, creoles have generally been regarded in popular opinion as degenerate variants or dialects of their parent languages. Because of that prejudice, many of the creoles that arose in the European colonies, having been stigmatized, have become extinct. However, political and academic changes in recent decades have improved the status of creoles, both as living languages and as object of linguistic study. Some creoles have even been granted the status of official or semi-official languages of particular political territories. Linguists now recognize that creole formation is a universal phenomenon, not limited to the European colonial period, and an important aspect of language evolution See Venman, 2003. For example, in 1933 Sigmund Feist postulated a creole origin for the Germanic languages. Other scholars, such as Salakoko Mufwene, argue that pigeons and creoles arise independently under different circumstances, and that a pigeon need not always precede a creole nor a creole evolve from a pigeon. Pigeons, according to Mufwene, emerged in trade colonies among users who preserved their native vernaculars for their day-to-day -day interactions. Creoles, meanwhile, developed in settlement colonies in which speakers of a European language, often indentured servants whose language would be far from the standard in the first place, interacted extensively with non-European slaves, absorbing certain words and features from the slaves' non-European native languages, resulting in a heavily basilectalized version of the original language. These servants and slaves would come to use the creole as an everyday vernacular, rather than merely in situations in which contact with a speaker of the superstrait was necessary. History Origin The English term creole comes from French creole, which is cognate with the Spanish term criollo and Portuguese criollo, all descending from the verb criar to breed or to raise, all coming from Latin creare to produce, create. 
The specific sense of the term was coined in the 16th and 17th century, during the great expansion in European maritime power and trade that led to the establishment of European colonies in other continents. The terms criollo and criollo were originally qualifiers used throughout the Spanish and Portuguese colonies to distinguish the members of an ethnic group who were born and raised locally from those who immigrated as adults. They were most commonly applied to nationals of the colonial power, e.g. to distinguish Espanol criollos people born in the colonies from Spanish ancestors from Espanol peninsulares those born in the Iberian Peninsula, i.e. Spain. However, in Brazil the term was also used to distinguish between Negros criollos blacks born in Brazil from African slave ancestors and Negros africanos born in Africa. Over time, the term and its derivatives creole, 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 etc. lost the generic meaning and became the proper name of many distinct ethnic groups that developed locally from immigrant communities. Originally, therefore, the term creole language meant the speech of any of those creole peoples. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Geographic distribution. As a consequence of colonial European trade patterns, most of the known European-based Creole languages arose in coastal areas in the equatorial belt around the world, including the Americas, Western Africa, Goa along the west of India, and along Southeast Asia up to Indonesia, Singapore, Macau, Hong Kong, the Philippines, Malaysia, Mauritius, Reunion, Seychelles and Oceania. Many of those Creoles are now extinct, but others still survive in the Caribbean, the north and east coasts of South America, the Guyanas, Western Africa, Australia see Australian Creole language, and in the Indian Ocean. Atlantic Creole languages are based on European languages with elements from African and possibly Amerindian languages. Indian Ocean Creole languages are based on European languages with elements from Malagasy and possibly other Asian languages. There are, however, Creoles like Nubi and Sango that are derived solely from non-European languages. Social and political status Because of the generally low status of the Creole peoples in the eyes of prior European colonial powers, Creole languages have generally been regarded as «degenerate» languages, or at best as rudimentary «dialects» of the politically dominant parent languages. Because of this, the word «creole» was generally used by linguists in opposition to «language» rather than as a qualifier for it another factor that may have contributed to the relative neglect of creole languages in linguistics is that they do not fit the 19th century neogrammarian tree model for the evolution of languages and its postulated regularity of sound changes these critics including the earliest advocates of the wave model johannes schmidt and hugo schuckart the forerunners of modern sociolinguistics this controversy of the late 19th century profoundly shaped modern approaches to the comparative method in historical linguistics and in creolistics. Because of social, political, and academic changes brought on by decolonization in the second half of the 20th century, creole languages have experienced revivals in the past few decades. They are increasingly being used in print and film, and in many cases, their community prestige has improved dramatically. In fact, some have been standardized, and are used in local schools and universities around the world. At the same time, linguists have begun to come to the realization that Creole languages are in no way inferior to other languages. They now use the term, Creole, or Creole language, for any language suspected to have undergone Creolization, terms that now imply no geographic restrictions nor ethnic prejudices. Creolization is widely thought to be a leading influence on the evolution of African American English AAE. The controversy surrounding AAVE in the American education system, as well as the past use of the word abonics to refer to it, mirrors the historical negative connotation of the word creole. Topic: Classification. Topic: Historic classification. According to their external history, four types of creoles have been distinguished, plantation creoles, fort creoles, maroon creoles, and creolized pigeons. By the very nature of a creole language, the phylogenetic classification of a particular creole usually is a matter of dispute, especially when the pigeon precursor and its parent tongues which may have been other creoles or pigeons have disappeared before they could be documented. 
Phylogenetic classification traditionally relies on inheritance of the lexicon, especially of core terms, and of the grammar structure. However, in creoles, the core lexicon often has mixed origin, and the grammar is largely original. For these reasons, the issue of which language is the parent of a creole that is, whether a language should be classified as a Portuguese creole or English creole, etc often has no definitive answer, and can become the topic of long-lasting controversies, where social prejudices and political considerations may interfere with scientific discussion. Topic. Substrate and superstrate The terms substrate and superstrate are often used when two languages interact. However, the meaning of these terms is reasonably well defined only in second language acquisition or language replacement events, when the native speakers of a certain source language the substrate are somehow compelled to abandon it for another target language the, superstrate. the outcome of such an event is that erstwhile speakers of the substrate will use some version of the superstrate, at least in more formal contexts. The substrate may survive as a second language for informal conversation. As demonstrated by the fate of many replaced European languages such as Etruscan, Breton, and Venetian, the influence of the substrate on the official speech is often limited to pronunciation and a modest number of loanwords. The substrate might even disappear altogether without leaving any trace. However, there is dispute over the extent to which the terms substrate and superstrate are applicable to the genesis or the description of Creole languages. The language replacement model may not be appropriate in creole formation contexts, where the emerging language is derived from multiple languages without any one of them being imposed as a replacement for any other. The substratum-superstratum distinction becomes awkward when multiple superstrata must be assumed such as in Papiamentu, when the substratum cannot be identified, or when the presence or the survival of substratal evidence is inferred from mere typological analogies. On the other hand, the distinction may be meaningful when the contributions of each parent language to the resulting creole can be shown to be very unequal, in a scientifically meaningful way. In the literature on Atlantic creoles, superstrate usually means European and substrate non-European or African. Topic decreolization Since creole languages rarely attain official status, the speakers of a fully formed creole may eventually feel compelled to conform their speech to one of the parent languages. This decreolization process typically brings about a post-creole speech continuum characterized by large-scale variation and hypercorrection in the language. It is generally acknowledged that creoles have a simpler grammar and more internal variability than older, more established languages. However, these notions are occasionally challenged. See also language complexity. Phylogenetic or typological comparisons of creole languages have led to divergent conclusions. Similarities are usually higher among creoles derived from related languages, such as the languages of Europe, than among broader groups that include also creoles based on non-Indo-European languages like Nubi or Sango. French-based creoles in turn are more similar to each other and to varieties of French than to other European-based creoles. It was observed, in particular, that definite articles are mostly prenominal in English-based creole languages and English whereas they are generally postnominal in French creoles and in the variety of French that was exported to what is now Quebec in the 17th and 18th century. Moreover, the European languages which gave rise to the creole languages of European colonies all belong to the same subgroup of Western Indo-European and have highly convergent grammars, to the point that Wharf joined them into a single standard average European language group. French and English are particularly close, since English, through extensive borrowing, is typologically closer to French than to other Germanic languages. Thus the claimed similarities between creoles may be mere consequences of similar parentage, rather than characteristic features of all creoles. Topic creole genesis There are a variety of theories on the origin of creole languages, all of which attempt to explain the similarities among them. Ahrens, Meiskin and Smith 1995 outline a fourfold classification of explanations regarding Creole genesis, theories focusing on European input theories focusing on non-European input gradualist and developmental hypotheses universalist approaches topic Theories focusing on European input topic Monogenetic theory of pigeons and creoles The monogenetic theory of pigeons and creoles hypothesizes that they are all derived from a single Mediterranean lingua franca, via a West African pigeon Portuguese of the 17th century, relaxified in the so-called slave factories of Western Africa that were the source of the Atlantic slave trade. 
This theory was originally formulated by Hugo Schuckart in the late 19th century and popularized in the late 1950s and early 1960s by Taylor, Wynnum, Thompson, and Stewart. However, this hypothesis is no longer actively investigated, as there are examples of creoles, such as Hajo, which evidently have nothing to do with the lingua franca. Topic domestic origin hypothesis proposed by Hancock 1985 for the origin of English-based creoles of the West Indies. The domestic origin hypothesis argues that towards the end of the 16th century, English-speaking traders began to settle in the Gambia and Sierra Leone rivers as well as in neighboring areas such as the Bullam and Sherbro coasts. These settlers intermarried with the local population leading to mixed populations, and, as a result of this intermarriage, an English pigeon was created. This pigeon was learned by slaves in slave depots, who later on took it to the West Indies and formed one component of the emerging English creoles. Topic European dialect origin hypothesis The French creoles are the foremost candidates to being the outcome of normal linguistic change and their creolness to be socio-historic in nature and relative to their colonial origin. Within this theoretical framework, a French creole is a language phylogenetically based on French, more specifically on a 17th century Koine French extant in Paris, the French Atlantic harbours, and the nascent French colonies. Supporters of this hypothesis suggest that the non creole French dialects still spoken in many parts of the Americas share mutual descent from this single Koine. These dialects are found in Canada, mostly in Quebec and in Acadian communities, Louisiana, St. Barthélemy and as isolates in other parts of the Americas. Approaches under this hypothesis are compatible with gradualism in change and models of imperfect language transmission in Koine Genesis. Topic foreigner talk and baby talk The foreigner talk FT hypothesis argues that a pidgin or creole language forms when native speakers attempt to simplify their language in order to address speakers who do not know their language at all. Because of the similarities found in this type of speech and speech directed to a small child, it is also sometimes called baby talk. Ahrens, Meiskin and Smith 1995 suggest that four different processes are involved in creating foreigner talk, accommodation imitation telegraphic condensation conventions This could explain why Creole languages have much in common, while avoiding a monogenetic model. However, Hinnenkamp 1984, in analyzing German foreigner talk, claims that it is too inconsistent and unpredictable to provide any model for language learning. While the simplification of input was supposed to account for Creole's simple grammar, commentators have raised a number of criticisms of this explanation. There are a great many grammatical similarities amongst pigeons and Creoles despite having very different lexifier languages. Grammatical simplification can be explained by other processes, i.e. the innate grammar of Bickerton's language bioprogram theory. Speakers of a Creole's lexifier language often fail to understand, without learning the language, the grammar of a pidgin or Creole. Pigeons are more often used amongst speakers of different substrate languages than between such speakers and those of the lexifier language. Another problem with the FT explanation is its potential circularity. Bloomfield 1933 points out that FT is often based on the imitation of the incorrect speech of the non-natives, that is the pigeon. Therefore, one may be mistaken in assuming that the former gave rise to the latter. Topic. Imperfect L2 learning The imperfect L2 second language learning hypothesis claims that pigeons are primarily the result of the imperfect L2 learning of the dominant lexifier language by the slaves. Research on naturalistic L2 processes has revealed a number of features of interlanguage systems that are also seen in pigeons and creoles. Invariant verb forms derived from the infinitive or the least marked finite verb form. Loss of determiners or uses determiners of demonstrative pronouns, adjectives or adverbs. Placement of a negative particle in preverbal position. Use of adverbs to express modality. Fixed single word order with no inversion in questions. Reduced or absent nominal plural marking. Imperfect L2 learning is compatible with other approaches, notably the European dialect origin hypothesis and the universalist models of language transmission. Topic. Theories focusing on non-European input Theories focusing on the substrate, or non-European, languages attribute similarities amongst creoles to the similarities of African substrate languages. 
These features are often assumed to be transferred from the substrate language to the creole or to be preserved invariant from the substrate language in the creole through a process of relexification. The substrate language replaces the native lexical items with lexical material from the superstrate language while retaining the native grammatical categories. The problem with this explanation is that the postulated substrate languages differ amongst themselves and with creoles in meaningful ways. Bickerton argues that the number and diversity of African languages and the paucity of a historical record on Creole genesis makes determining lexical correspondences a matter of chance. Dillard coined the term, "'cafeteria principle' to refer to the practice of arbitrarily attributing features of Creoles to the influence of substrate African languages or assorted substandard dialects of European languages. For a representative debate on this issue, see the contributions to Mufwene 1993. For a more recent view, Parkval 2000. Because of the socio-historic similarities amongst many, but by no means all of the Creoles, the Atlantic slave trade and the plantation system of the European colonies have been emphasized as factors by linguists such as McWhorter 1999. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Gradualist and developmental hypotheses. One class of creoles might start as pigeons, rudimentary second languages improvised for use between speakers of two or more non-intelligible native languages. Keith Winham in Himes 1971 suggests that pigeons need three languages to form, with one the super straight, being clearly dominant over the others. The lexicon of a pigeon is usually small and drawn from the vocabularies of its speakers, in varying proportions. Morphological details like word inflections, which usually take years to learn, are omitted. The syntax is kept very simple, usually based on strict word order. In this initial stage, all aspects of the speech, syntax, lexicon, and pronunciation, tend to be quite variable, especially with regard to the speaker's background. If a pidgin manages to be learned by the children of a community as a native language, it may become fixed and acquire a more complex grammar, with fixed phonology, syntax, morphology, and syntactic embedding. Pidgins can become full languages in only a single generation. Creolization is this second stage where the pidgin language develops into a fully developed native language. The vocabulary, too, will develop to contain more and more items according to a rationale of lexical enrichment. Topic Universalist approaches Universalist models stress the intervention of specific general processes during the transmission of language from generation to generation and from speaker to speaker. The process invoked varies, a general tendency towards semantic transparency, first language learning driven by universal process, or general process of discourse organization. The main Universalist theory is still Bickerton's language bioprogram theory, proposed in the 1980s. Bickerton claims that creoles are inventions of the children growing up on newly founded plantations. Around them, they only heard pigeons spoken, without enough structure to function as natural languages, and the children used their own innate linguistic capacities to transform the pigeon input into a full-fledged language. The alleged common features of all creoles would then be the consequence of those innate abilities being universal. Topic recent studies The last decade has seen the emergence of some new questions about the nature of creoles, in particular, the question of how complex creoles are and the question of whether creoles are indeed exceptional languages. Topic creole prototypes Some features that distinguish creole languages from noncreoles have been proposed by Bickerton, for example. John McWhorter has proposed the following list of features to indicate a creole prototype, a lack of inflectional morphology other than at most two or three inflectional affixes, a lack of tone on monosyllabic words, and a lack of semantically opaque word formation. McWhorter hypothesizes that these three properties exactly characterize a creole. However, the creole prototype hypothesis has been disputed. Henri Whitman 1999 and David Gill 2001 argue that languages such as Manding, Saniki, Magua French and Riau Indonesian have all these three features but show none of the socio-historic traits of creole languages. Others see overview in Meisken and Law 2001 have demonstrated creoles that serve as counterexamples to McWhorter's hypothesis, the existence of inflectional morphology in Berbice Dutch creole, for example, or tone in Papiamentu. Topic exceptionalism Building up on this discussion, McWhorter proposed that the world's simplest grammars are creole grammars, claiming that every noncreole language's grammar is at least as complex as any creole language's grammar. 
Gill has replied that Riau Indonesian has a simpler grammar than Saramakan, the language McWhorter uses as a showcase for his theory. The same objections were raised by Whitman in his 1999 debate with McWhorter. The lack of progress made in defining creoles in terms of their morphology and syntax has led scholars such as Robert Chowdenson, Salakoko Mufwene, Michel Degriff, and Henri Whitman to question the value of creole as a typological class. They argue that creoles are structurally no different from any other language, and that creole is a socio historic concept, not a linguistic one, encompassing displaced populations and slavery. Thomason and Kaufman. 1988 spell out the idea of Creole exceptionalism, claiming that Creole languages are an instance of non-genetic language change due to language shift with abnormal transmission. Gradualists question the abnormal transmission of languages in a Creole setting and argue that the processes which created today's Creole languages are no different from universal patterns of language change. Given these objections to Creole as a concept, Degriff and others question the idea that Creoles are exceptional in any meaningful way. Additionally, Mufwene argues that some Romance languages are potential creoles but that they are not considered as such by linguists because of a historical bias against such a view. See also Creolistics Dialect Diglossia Gradualism Language change Language contact Lingua franca List of Creole languages Macaronic language Middle English Creole hypothesis Mixed language Pidgin Coin language Nation language Nicaraguan Sign Language Relaxification Substratum Topic. Creoles by parent language Arabic-based Creole languages Assamese-based, Nagamese Chinese-based, Tanguang, Hokoglish Dutch-based Creole languages English-based Creole languages French-based Creole languages German-based, Unserdeutsch Hindi-based, Andaman Creole Hindi Japanese-based, Yilin Creole Japanese, Kanban Kundoku Congo-based, Kichuba Malay-based Creole languages NG Bondi-based, Sango Portuguese-based Creole languages Spanish-based Creole languages Sinhala-based, Veda language References Further reading Anderson, Roger W., ed., 1983, Pigeonization and Creolization as Language Acquisition, Rowley, M.A., Newberry House Ansaldo, U., Matthews, S. 2007. Deconstructing Creole, the Rationale. Typological Studies in Language, 73-1-20, doi, 10.1075, tsl.73.02 ans, ISSN 0167-7373 Ahrens, Jacques, Meiskin, Peter, Smith, Norval 1995, Pigeons and Creoles, An Introduction, Amsterdam, Benjamins, ISBN 90-272-5236-X Arens, Jacques 1989, Syntactic Developments in Sranen, Creolization as a Gradual Process, Nijmegen, ISBN 90-900268-3-5 Bailey, Charles J., Marolt, Carl 1977, The French Lineage of English. In Meisel, Jürgen, Longs and Contact, Pigeons, Creoles, Tübingen, NARR, pp. 21-53 Bickerton, Derek 2009, Bastard Tongues, A Trailblazing Linguist Finds Clues to Our Common Humanity in the World's Lowliest Languages, Macmillan, ISBN 978-0-8090-2816-0 Bickerton, Derek 1981, Roots of Language, Karoma Publishers, ISBN 0-89720-044-6 Scientific American, 249 8, 116-122, doi, 10.1038, Scientific American 0783-116, JSTOR 24968948 
Bickerton, Derek. 1984. The Language Bioprogram Hypothesis. The Behavioral and Brain Sciences, 7 173 188, Sitesiarex 10.1.1.908.5328, doi 10.1017, S0140525X0004414149. Bloomfield, L. Language, New York, Henry Holt. DeCamp, David. The Development of Pigeon and Creole Studies. In Valdman, Albert, Pigeon and Creole Linguistics, Bloomington, Indiana University Press, pp. 3 20. Degriff, Michel. On the Origin of Creoles A Cartesian Critique of Neo Darwinian Linguistics. Linguistic Typology, 5 2 3, 213 310. Degriff, Michel. Relexification, a reevaluation. PDF, Linguistic Anthropology, 44, 321-414, JSTOR 30028860. Degriff, Michel. Against Creole Exceptionalism. Language, 79, 391-410, doi, 10.1353, LAN.2003.0114. Dillard, J. L. Principles in the History of American English, Paradox, Virginity, and Cafeteria. Florida Foreign Language Reporter, 832-33 Eckromer, Eva How to Pave the Way for the Emancipation of a Creole Language. Papiamentu, or What Can a Literature Do for Its Language? In Hoogbergen, Vim, Born Out of Resistance. On Caribbean Cultural Creativity, Utrecht, Iser Publications Feist, Sigmund The Origin of the Germanic Languages and the Europeanization of North Europe. Language, 8 254 doi, 10.2307, 408831, JSTOR 408831 Ferguson, C.A. Absence of copula and the notion of simplicity, a study of normal speech, baby talk, foreigner talk and pigeons. In Himes, D. Pigeonization and Creolization of Languages, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Fertel, Rian 2014, Imagining the Creole City, The Rise of Literary Culture in Nineteenth-Century New Orleans, Baton Rouge, Louisiana, Louisiana State University Press Fournier, Robert, Whitman, Henri, eds. 1995, Le Français des Amériques, Trois Rivières, Presses Universitaires de Trois Rivières, ISBN 2 9802307 2 Fournier, Robert. Des créolismes dans la distribution des déterminants et des complémentaires en français québécois basilectal. In Patrice Brasser, Francais de Marique, Variation, Créolisation, Normalisation, Université d'Avignon, Centre d'études canadiennes, pp. 217-228 Gieslin, Kimberly L. 2002. Semantic Transparency as a Predictor of Copula Choice in Second Language Acquisition. Linguistics, 42, 439-468, doi, 10.1515, ling.2002.019 Gill, David Creoles, Complexity and Riau Indonesian. Linguistic Typology, 5-325-371 Good, Jeff Tone and Accent in Saramakan, Charting a Deep Split in the Phonology of a Language. PDF, Lingua, 114, 5, 575-619, doi, 10.1016, S0024384103-00062-7. Hall, Robert A. Pigeon and Creole Languages, Ithaca, Cornell University Hall, Robert A., External History of the Romance Languages, New York, American Elsevier Publishing Company Hamilton, A. Chris, Coslett, H. Branch 2008. Role of Inflectional Regularity and Semantic Transparency in Reading Morphologically Complex Words, Evidence from Acquired Dyslexia. 
Nero case, 14 4, 347 to 368, doi, 101080, 13 quadrillion 554 trillion 790,802,368,679, PMID 18,792,839. Hancock, Ian F. 1985. The Domestic Hypothesis, Diffusion and Componentiality, An Account of Anglophone Creole Origins. In Peter Meiskin, Norval Smith, Substrata versus Universals in Creole Genesis, Amsterdam, Benjamins, pp. 71-102. Hinnenkamp, V. Eyewitnessing Pigeonization, Structural and Sociolinguistic Aspects of German and Turkish Foreigner Talk. In Seba, M., Todd, L., Papers from the York Creole Conference, September 24–27, 1983, York Papers in Linguistics 11 Home, John 1988, Pigeons and Creoles, 1, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Home, John 1989, Pigeons and Creoles, 2, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Hunter Smith, Norval Selby 1987, The Genesis of the Creole Languages of Suriname, Amsterdam Himes, D. H. 1971, Pigeonization and Creolization of Languages, Cambridge University Press Youngeman, Frederick H. 1955, La Teoria del Substrato y los Dialectos Hispano Romances y Gascones, Madrid Lang, Jürgen 2009, Les Longs des autres dans la créolisation, théorie et exemplification par la créole d'imprienta Wolof à Lille Santiago du Capvert, Tübingen, NARR Lefebvre, Claire 2002, The Emergence of Productive Morphology in Creole Languages, The Case of Haitian Creole. Yearbook of Morphology, 35–80 Martinet, André Économie des changements phonétiques, Traité de phonologie diachronique, Bern, Frank McWhorter, John H. Identifying the Creole prototype, vindicating a typological class. Language, 74 788–818, doi, 10.2307, JSTOR 417003 McWhorter, John H. 1999. The Afrogenesis Hypothesis of Plantation Creole Origin. In Huber, M. Parkval, M. Spreading the Word, The Issue of Diffusion Among the Atlantic Creoles, London, University of Westminster Press. McWhorter, John H. 2005, Defining Creole, Oxford, Oxford University Press. Meyer, Gus, Meiskin, Peter. 1977. On the Beginnings of Pigeon and Creole Studies, Schuckart and Hesseling. In Valdman, Albert, Pigeon and Creole Linguistics, Bloomington, Indiana University Press, pp. 21-45 Meisel, Jürgen 1977, Longs and Contact, Pigeons, Creoles, Tübingen, NARR Mufwene, Salakoko, ed. 1993, Africanisms in Afro-American Language Varieties, Athens, University of Georgia Press Mufwene, Salakoko 2000. Creolization is a social, not a structural, process. In Newman Holshue, Ingrid, Schneider, Edgar, Degrees of Restructuring in Creole Languages, Amsterdam, John Benjamins, pp. 65-84. Mufwene, Salakoko 2002, The Ecology of Language Evolution, Cambridge, Cambridge University Press Meiskin, Peter, Law, Paul 2001. Creole Studies, A Theoretical Linguist's Field Guide. Glott International, 5 2, 47-57 Parkval, Michael 2000, Out of Africa, African Influences in Atlantic Creoles, London, Battlebridge Schumann, John H. 1978, the Pigeonization Process, A Model for Second Language Acquisition, Rowley, M.A., Newberry House Seba, Mark 1997, Contact Languages, Pigeons and Creoles, Macmillan, ISBN 0-333-63024-6 Soren, Peter A. M., Wecker, Herman C. 1986, Semantic Transparency as a Factor in Creole Genesis. In Meiskin, Peter, Smith, Norval, Substrata vs. Universals in Creole Genesis, Amsterdam, Benjamins, pp. 57-70, 
Singler, John Victor The Influence of African Languages on Pigeons and Creoles. In K., Jonathan, Koopman, H., Sportish, D., et al., Current Approaches to African Linguistics, 2, Dordrecht, Forrest, pp. 65-77, ISBN 90-70176-95-5 Singler, John Victor The Homogeneity of the Substrate as a Factor in Pigeon, Creole Genesis. Language, 64 27-51, doi, 10. 2307-414784, JSTOR 4147846 Singler, John Victor 1996, Theories of Creole Genesis, Sociohistorical Considerations, and the Evaluation of Evidence, The Case of Haitian Creole and the Relaxification Hypothesis, Journal of Pidgin and Creole Languages, 11-185-230, doi, 10.1075, JPCL, 11.2.0 0.02SIN Stewart, William A. 1962, Creole Languages in the Caribbean, in F. A. Rice, Study of the Role of Second Languages, Washington, D.C., Center for Applied Linguistics, pp. 34-53 Takashi, Takatsu 2008, Kundoku as a Pidgin Creole Language, Pijin Koreo Ru Yu Toshitino Shuindu in Harukichi Nakamura, Essays on Kundoku, The Literary Chinese in East Asian World and Japanese Language, Shuindu Lun Dong Ajia Han Wen Shi Jia to Ri Ben Yu Tokyo, Bensei Shuppen Mi and Sheung Chu Ban Taylor, Douglas 1977, Languages in the West Indies, Baltimore, Johns Hopkins University Press Thomason, Sarah, Kaufman, Terence 1988, Language Contact, Creolization, and Genetic Linguistics 1st ed., Berkeley, University of California Press Thompson, R. W. 1961, A Note on Some Possible Affinities Between the Creole Dialects of the Old World and Those of the New, Creole Language Studies, 2 to 107 minus 113. Trowget, Elizabeth Kloss, 1977. The Development of Pidgin and Creole Studies in Valdman, Theo. Pidgin and Creole Linguistics, Bloomington, Indiana University Press, pp. 70 to 98. Venman, Theo, 2003. Languages in Prehistoric Europe North of the Alps in Bamsberger, Alfred. Venman, Theo. Languages in Prehistoric Europe. Heidelberg, C. Winter, pp. 319 to 332. Ward. Ha, Ronald 2002, Pigeons and Creoles, An Introduction to Sociolinguistics 4th ed., Blackwell Publishing, pp. 57-86 Winford, D. 1997, Creole Formation in the Context of Contact Languages, Journal of Pigeon and Creole Languages, 12 131-151, doi, 10.1075, JPCL, 12.1.06 Win Weinreich, Uriel 1979, 53, Languages in Contact, Findings and Problems, New York, Mouton Publishers, ISBN 978-90-279-2689-0 Winham, Keith Spanish Contact Vernaculars in the Philippine Islands, Hong Kong Winham, Keith The Origin of the European-Based Creoles and Pigeons, Orbis, 14-509-27 Whitman, Henri Les Reactions en Chain en Morphologie Diachronique PDF. Actes du colloque de la Société Internationale de Linguistique Fonctionnelle, 10 to 285 minus 92. Whitman, Henri, 1995. Grammaire comparé des variétés coloniales du français populaire de Paris du 17 e siècle et origines du français québécois. In Fournier, Robert, Whitman, Henri, Le Français des Amériques. PDF. Trois Rivières. Presses Universitaires de Trois Rivières. Pp. 281 to 334. Whitman, Henri 1998, Le Français de Paris dans Le Français des Amériques PDF, Proceedings of the International Congress of Linguists, Amsterdam, Elsevier, 16 Whitman, Henri 1999. Prototype as a typological yardstick to creolness. Quote. The Creolist Archives Papers Online, Stockholm's Universität. Whitman, Henri 2001. Lexical Diffusion and the Glottogenetics of Creole French. Creolist Debate, Parts 1 v. Appendixes 1-9. The Linguist List, Eastern Michigan University, Wayne State University. Worf, Benjamin 1956, John Carroll, ed., Language, Thought, and Reality, Selected Writings of Benjamin Lee Worf, Cambridge, MIT Press. Topic. External links 
International Magazine Creole Association of Portuguese and Spanish Lexically Based Creoles Language Varieties Creole Language at Answers Com Creole Definition at the Online Dictionary of Language Terminology ODLT Louisiana Creole Dictionary Society for Pidgin and Creole Linguistics Topic in French Group Europon de Recherches en Langues Creoles Group d'études et de Recherches en Espace Creolophone in Libraries WorldCat Catalog Associação Brasileira de Estudos Creoles e Similares Society for Caribbean Linguistics <laughs>